The new 100.1 Moose FM. I have it on my radio all day, every day. I always listen. I always listen. The best variety in the north. Here we are then, Moose FM. It is 9.02 on Sunday morning. Very pleased to say we have the federal liberal leader, Justin Trudeau, in with us this morning. Justin, good morning. Good morning, Ollie. How are you? How is the North treating you? Oh, it's just wonderful. As as always, people are warm and welcoming, and uh, it's just an incredibly beautiful place. I mean, the big message that I'm uh, uh, pushing uh, to my friends and, and everyone in the South is, uh, no, you don't just have to come up here in the summertime. Come up here in the winter as well, where it's uh, it's gorgeous and uh, a little brisk, but uh, you get uh, a, a beautiful, uh, beautiful experience experience as well. So you, you've come up here, you know, it's a chance to meet people, it's a chance to experience the North a little bit. What experiences have you had so far since you arrived in Inuvik on Friday? Uh, been uh, a lot of great conversations. I think one of the big things that uh, I think are, are, is so important to connect with and to understand the challenges of the North is to meet people and to listen to them and engage and and, uh, and learn from uh, from the stories and the challenges that they're, they're facing. But uh, uh, it wouldn't be a trip to the North without a little uh, skidooing and dog sledding, and we're, uh, we're keeping busy with that. I actually brought my uh, my son Xavier up with me. Uh, he's seven, but it's uh, it's memories for me of all the times uh, my father uh, brought us up uh, as kids uh, to the north, and uh, I'm I'm making sure that he gets a, an early love for the uh, the north the way I did. Yeah, the snowmobiling for the first time. Yes, he actually uh, got to, got to uh, sit on a snowmobile on his own and, and drive it uh, for a, a short stretch just to, just to see what it was like. Okay, he sounds like he's enjoying himself. Oh, he sure is. When you first arrived here, you said you're not here to make any election promises. You're here to learn. What have you learned so far from speaking to people here? Oh, I've learned that uh, there is an incredible optimism about uh, about the future in the north. Uh, there's a, there's a sense that we have uh, uh, a tremendous uh, opportunities in terms of resource development, in terms of tourism, in terms of uh, building stronger communities up here. We just need a federal government that is a more active partner, that is uh, uh, ready to make the infrastructure investments, but also ready to understand that uh, sovereignty in the north is more than just uh, uh, military or de- uh, resource development. It's also about supporting the people up here and there have been a lot of people disappointed with uh, uh, the the, um, the 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 problems uh, associated with Nutrition North and the need to uh, support people's ability to, to feed their families, uh, but also uh, real challenges around uh, uh, getting the kind of resource development right with both social li- license and environmental responsibility uh, at the forefront of how we uh, build a stronger economy. Okay, so you mentioned Nutrition North there. You've got cost of living as well. There are really high suicide rates, self-harm rates in North, alcoholism, murdered and missing Indigenous women. Uh, Assuming, you know, if we take a hypothetical, there's a Liberal government in power come the end of this year, where do you start with that list? Well, I think on, on let's go through the elements of the list. We need uh, a robust uh, mental health strategy in this country and, and the kinds of... Uh, um, investments that are going to mean that people can access mental health services, uh, whether it's problems with addiction or others. Uh, people need to know that there are there are resources to turn to. And, and one of the challenges is when p- someone's in crisis in the north, uh, by the time uh, they are, particularly in remote areas, by the time they are uh, brought to a place of safety, it's either too late or uh, the crisis has passed and then they just get sent back and they, there's not a proper uh, dealing with in terms of mental health. Uh, you know, domestic violence, missing murdered Aboriginal women. We need to make sure uh, that we have a, a public inquiry. We have to make sure that we're uh, learning the lessons uh, of the past and uh, building stronger communities for the future. Uh, we're also looking at the end of the uh, Truth and Reconciliation Committee, uh, Commission uh, in uh, in June, and I think the lessons we learned from that and how we go forward are going to be essential in uh, how we build stronger uh, a stronger future for everyone in the North. And picking up on Nutrition North as well. Now, we, we know what's perceived to have gone wrong with that, but how can that program be put right specifically? Well, I think the first thing is there has to be a will by the government to say, OK, uh, it's the role of the federal government to make sure that uh, food is affordable for people everywhere in Canada. And the barriers that are particular to the north uh, need to have a federal government committed to uh, reducing them. And that means applying a robust program across uh, across the territories. Uh, and right now we have a sort of an arbitrary list of uh, who gets support and who doesn't, and there's a, a lack of checks and balances into, as to whether or not the uh, uh, subsidies are being passed along uh, to the consumers. And that that's the kind of uh, uh, sloppy governance that uh, you know, northerners deserve better. 
not every Liberal policy would necessarily help with the cost of living up here. Just a question on carbon tax. In August, you told McLean's everyone around the world is recognising the need to price carbon pollution. Mm -hmm. What impact would that have on the North when you have isolated small communities entirely dependent on diesel and people who are already struggling with cost? Well, I think, uh, first of all, understanding that what will help the North is if we can actually start developing our northern resources in a, in a responsible way. And right now, uh, Canada's having a lot of trouble, whether it's with Keystone XL pipeline or other other uh, resource developments actually convincing people that we're doing a good job of balancing the environment and the and the economy because quite frankly we're not and if there had been as Mr. Harper has promised since 2008 some sort of price on carbon we would have already passed at least the Keystone XL and perhaps some other pipelines and that uh, that failure to actually understand that lack of environmental responsibility is hurting our economy uh, is something that is that is uh, affecting us so every Everyone has said that we need a price on carbon, and uh, the kind of support we give to remote communities in terms of their energy needs uh, needs to be separate from that and uh, needs to continue. But that sort of environmental responsibility is going to require a phenomenal investment in the North, isn't it? It'll require investment, but it'll also uh, require a a different way of doing things, a a sense of partnership, of working together, of figuring out how to uh, build not just for the next quarter, uh, but for the next 10 years, the next 30 years, the next 50 years. And that kind of perspective is what's lacking right now. You've got a couple of Liberal candidates here at the moment who are both hoping to earn the Liberal nomination for the federal election this year. Have you met them so far? Uh, I've uh, I've met a, a, a couple of them, and uh, I know there's other people interested as well. We have uh, uh, it's an exciting time right now, right across the country. Uh, that people are looking at the Liberal Party as uh, a serious alternative to Mr. Harper, and uh, looking forward to stepping up. And I don't think we've ever had a contested nomination in the North. Uh, and uh, looking at this actually happening this time is exciting for the party, but it's also exciting for democracy. And what's your advice going to be to them when they're going door to door out there as to what they should be saying? What should their first primary message be, bearing in mind that they've probably got about 10 seconds before they freeze out there going door to door in this part of the world. Indeed. Uh, just that they're that they're here to listen, they're here to be good voices for uh, northerners in Ottawa and not just uh, you know the voice of Ottawa in the north and that uh, that emphasis is what uh, uh, what people are looking forward to hearing. They want their democracy to work and they want to be able to participate in that and uh, right now we're not getting that from this government. Just a couple more questions for you. The uh, Toronto Star, in keeping with many other media organisations over the last couple of weeks, headline from them, the election is Trudeau's to lose. Are they wrong? Oh, you know what? I'm I'm not worried too much about what either my opponents or what various pundits are saying. I'm just focused on doing the work I need to do to meet as many people as I can and to build a vision of this country that draws together uh, extraordinary candidates from across the country willing to work hard to build a better Canada. And that's uh, uh, that's what I'm focused on. I don't think of this in terms of win or lose. I think of it in terms of uh, how can I best serve my country? And that's what I'm focused on. And if you do happen to become Prime Minister Trudeau, will we see you back up here in the north every year? (laughs) I guarantee it. Okay, even if it costs a bit of money? Uh, Listen, uh, for me, being the Prime Minister of all of Canada and not not just the parts that might uh, vote for me or might be more supportive uh, is something that Canadians need to see once again because we're not getting that from this guy. All right, now just quickly, there is a chance for people to come out and see you this afternoon, isn't Yes, it? looking forward to welcoming people to a big public meet and greet at the Explorer uh, at uh, 3 o'clock, 3, 3.30, uh, and uh, looking forward to, uh, to chatting with as many uh, locals as I can. And where's next? Uh, next, I'm off to uh, Rankin and Iqaluit uh, tomorrow. All right, safe journey, and thank you very much for coming in this morning. That is the Federal Liberal Leader, Justin Trudeau. Thank you, Justin. Pleasure, Ollie.